So to get onto the common application, you just uh, Google search it, common app. And this is what it looks like. You could start the application here, but really you do need to sign in and create uh, and or create an account. Okay, create an account if you don't have one. Uh, sign in if you already have an account. When you click sign in, especially if you already created an account, click on transfer student. Student. So we have a sample account here uh, through our transfer center. Uh, for those students who've done the CSU application, it's actually the same vendor that does it. Um, majority of the information on the Common App is pretty straightforward. So if you click on to personal information, you know, communications preference, really just read through the questions and answer them. Majority of the questions are very, very straightforward. Some biographical information, name, gender, sex, pronouns, and so forth. Contact information. Okay, your current address and your permanent address, phone number, nationality, race, uh, other information. Let's, so let's see what's here in other information. So it's just language, family background. Uh, if you have a social security number, put it in. If you're an international student, you can leave that blank. Okay, so they asked a little bit about career interests and um, some other questions on COVID as well as um, circumstance for provide details. If you put yes, sometimes they um, provide an extra box. Parents, guardian, um, the fee waiver. Um, that one, I don't know if it's automatic. It's been a while. I know this is a newer application. So therefore just fill it out. And if you do input your uh, uh, income information, um, you know, actually here it is. Here it says common app fee waiver. In short, it's really meant for really the really low income students, okay? If you have that, uh, or in that scenario, uh, you, you might qualify for a free waiver, but you will have to go through this and read through this. To navigate it, you have the four tabs up top, but you always have to click back into here in order to get back to uh, the four quadrants, I call it. So for, for the four quadrants, Personal, very self-explanatory. Academic history, you would just add the high school you attended. Pretty straightforward there. You should be able to find that. College attended. So you would add in you know, IVC and then any other colleges or universities that you applied uh, to. In a little bit, I'm actually going to talk to you about transcripts and how to submit your transcripts. Okay. Um, some schools may uh, require you to submit official transcripts right away. Others uh, will ask you to upload unofficial. So I'll show that to you. And it's actually right here. Uh, some of the schools that you're applying for. Um, Cornell for one of the students. Okay. Official transcripts. NYU. Uh, upload your unofficial. And I'll show you where to upload it. And I know that we had that one student who just joined us. Uh Hamza, if you don't mind, just putting in the schools that you're looking at applying to. So I could kind of tailor this presentation to the three, the four of you. Just put in uh, Irvine Valley College. So if you also attended Santiago uh, uh, Saddleback College, add that in, or another college like Santa, Santa Ana Orange Coast College, just add that in. You could even upload your unofficial transcripts if you want to, okay? Especially if it's required for the school that you're applying to. But these schools here, Cornell, Brown, Penn, um, more likely they're going to ask for official transcripts. And I'll show you how to submit official transcripts to them. Uh, Hamza, uh, tell me the, the private schools you want to apply to. All right, moving on. College coursework. Majority of the schools that you will be applying to will not ask you to input every single coursework in your application. There's a few that may, but the majority um, will not, okay? Um, so we'll see, let's see what here, what we have. We have Brown, University of Penn, Texas A&M. Now, unfortunately for the students who are applying for University of Penn, they do require full transcript entry to submit to these programs. So that means that they're gonna force you, if you're applying to UPenn, to basically um, 
take your unofficial copy of your transcript, everything that you have, all those coursework, and put it one by one, line by line, to pretty much mirror or match up, okay? And, and input it into the application itself. Schools like Stanford, Cornell, NYU, Rice, uh, and so forth uh, do not, right? So I'm not sure about Northwestern or Vanderbilt. Once you add it in, uh, this section will tell you if uh, you need to input all your coursework in or not. So if you are applying, for example, University of Penn and Brown, you have to click here, start, and then you start adding semesters. So let's say your first semester was fall with us of 2020, 2021 there. Uh, everything's freshman and sophomore, nothing is junior or senior. Complete it, you add the course. So you keep adding courses and adding semesters. Um, you would just type in the course code, for example, a psych one, intro to psychology, subject psychology, unit or uh, credit would be three, grade, and don't worry about the cast grade, it'll automatically appear. And then you'll just add that. So like I said, it should mirror your transcript. And make sure you fill in everything in order to click save. Now, if you're lucky and you, the schools that you apply for don't require the transcript entry, okay, then you don't have to wor worry about it. But again, some schools will require the transcript entry. They'll tell you right here. For the GPA entry, you just add the GPA here. It's actually pretty simple. You just click on add GPA, undergraduate. Uh, how, many, uh, trans, uh, how many transferable units you have? So let's say you have uh, 30 units and your GPA is a 3.8. Automatically the quality points will come up and you'll click save. And then you could add your second school or third school. So if you attended some classes as a Saddleback, that's separate. And, and maybe like, for example, Orange Coast College, you'll do that separately. Just put in the number, total number of transferable units and the GPA at that school. Standardized test grades are real uh, simple. Just add in, uh, for most of you, AP. Click on here and put in which AP exam. Take when you took it. Don't worry about the AP ID. And then when did you uh, take that AP exam? Continue ed, don't worry about this. Most of you should not have anything related to continue ed. SATs, it really depends on the university that you're applying to. A few actually still, uh, well, I don't think anyone, there might be one or two that might still require SATs, but most are probably, my gut tells me, test optional. If you have uh, your SAT scores you're, and you know and you know that they're pretty high, you know, definitely um, if it's optional, I would put it in, okay? But um, it really depends on each school. And I'll even have, show you how to check. So let's say, for example, Cornell, because I believe one of you is applying to Cornell. You can go to Cornell. And in the past, I recall they had a nice checklist. Timeline. And they tell you everything that you need. $80, final high school transcripts, official college transcripts, college report, academic recommendations, midterm, okay, financial aid, uh, materials, supplemental. So here, nothing about um, SATs at all, but uh, they want both high school and college transcripts. And also they want the college report and the midterm report. I'm actually gonna cover uh, both the college report and the midterm report, as well as the recommendations uh, in a little bit. All right, going back here. 
senior secondary examination. Don't know much about that. I think most of you will uh, probably just bypass that. Community-based organizations. Enter any community-based organizations that provided you with free assistance in your transfer application process. So if you've uh, used any um, nonprofit types of organizations, okay, um, community-based programs, organizations, and it's really free assistance. Once you fill out the academic portion here, then um, let me actually talk to you about transcript submission. Okay, because I think that's really important before I jump into the supporting information. Most schools actually want you to send transcripts to them, especially official, directly. So, for example, for USC, if you type in USC transcript submission, They actually give you information for on the UC, USC's website here. If the school does not provide, uh, now USC does uh, accept electronic uh, transcripts, okay? And also hard copy. So you could just go to IVC transcript submission, transcript. Ordering transcripts, order, log in here with your email, continue, okay? And then you should be able to find USC undergraduate and have our school through our parchment system send it directly. If you've taken classes at Saddleback, a few classes over there, you also have to submit official transcripts from Saddleback, even though your uh, coursework on your transcript will have both Saddleback and IBC. So it's not sufficient just to have IBC's uh, uh, transcript if you took Saddleback classes. It's technically two different separate schools. Okay. So I know that Chapman and USC, for sure, they um, want you to submit the electronic transcripts directly to them that way. Now, in the past, through a, uh, the Common App, you actually can use their, um, their system to have transcripts sent to the Common App, and then the Common App disperses it to the different schools. But actually, that's not the recommended way for most universities, okay? If I were you, I would literally go onto each school that you are applying to and read through how they want the transcripts, especially for transfer students. Okay, moving on. So go to go back to my app, you have to click it over here, then click over here. Okay. Um, oh, uh, I'm sorry, one more thing. Let me just add an additional program or school so you can kind of see that. And for those who already started the application, uh, you know, this is probably just review for you, but it's just a good confirmation that you're doing it correctly. We'll add. Let's add in Yale and Loyola. We'll find out. Okay, so you could just type in Yale filter. Yale transfer program. Add. Hello, Y O L A filter. Low and Marymount. Double check where it is. So this is California, this is Illinois, this is Maryland. And then let me add in Duke. Just for some of your schools here that you're interested in. Fall, and double check, you know, always double check all the details and look at also the deadline. Once you're there, you can click back to my app, click academic history. Click college coursework. 
And you can see which schools require the full transcript entry class by class under IBC and and then or any other college or universities you attended. You have to input everything, again, to mirror the actual um, uh, unofficial transcript. These schools will not need uh, that. More likely, these will definitely uh, ask you to submit uh, official transcripts to them. Moving on. We're going to actually click on to supporting information. Here, you'll add in your um, community service, uh, extracurriculars, uh, responsibilities, hobbies, volunteer work, internships, and so forth. You just add, click Add Experience, the type, the organization, supervisor, if there's a relevant supervisor, start and end date, and a little bit of detail. It's just enough for them to understand what that event, activity, volunteer, or work experience is all about, okay? So it really shouldn't be more than two to three sentences long. And plus, there's even a character limit here. And you want to be as truthful and as accurate as possible. Achievements are more awards and honors. Honors, publications, and awards. For this part right here, for the documentation, there is both the college report and the midterm report. So earlier, I showed you Cornell. Cornell wants college report and midterm report, and of course, uh, the letter recommendation. So when you are on here, you would click onto college report. The college report looks like this. Just save it, and then fill it out the top part right here. Leave the bottom part for college official section blank. What you're going to do then is once you save this, we, and with your information filled out, you would just go on to IBC forms. You will go down to common app request. Log in with your credentials. All right, the common form re application request will come up. Then you'll attach uh, that common, uh, the, the college report. And do it for as many colleges that uh, requires it. Majority of the schools that uh, private universities you'll be applying for um, will require it. So if you are applying to Cornell, you know, um, USC, Duke, Yale, and so forth, and all of them required, then it will be separate ones. You literally have to attach four different ones, and then you would put attention, institution, um, their email address, their address, all this information. So then our school then will uh, basically uh, get it over to them. And I believe likely it's going to be via email. That's how it's going to be sent to them. Oh, interesting. Here's additional recipients. Let me see here. Let me think this through real quick. If that is the case, if you look at the college report, it has student name and our college information only. It doesn't have anything about a specific school. So it looks like, my apologies, I made a mistake. It's been a while since I've done this, okay? So here, you actually can with one form. It looks like our school can submit it to multiple universities all at once, which is a very good thing. <laughs> Less work for you. In the past, I think when we did it, uh, the hard copy, uh, literally students would have to bring, come into the admissions office and bring like, you know, the five schools that are applying to that requires the college report, five copies, and then it fill, it's filled out and it's returned to the student. So electronically, it looks like um, only uh, one form, but to multiple campuses. That's a good thing. Okay. Now, for the college report, like I said, pretty much all the schools that you're applying to will require the college report. The midterm report really depends on the school. It looks like Cornell, from the example, uh, does require the midterm report. 
this midterm report actually is not um, done through admissions or counseling. It's really with you and your instructors. You fill out the information here, and then you go to all your professors, instructors, and have them fill out the course and your current grade, likely you're going to be doing this sometime late in March, early April. There's probably a deadline that a lot of the, the private schools, um, out-of-state schools uh, require this. So just look at that deadline and make sure that you fill this out and submit it to them and figure out um, uh, via their, their website uh, where to email it to. Definitely this should that information should be accessible. And if you can't find it, I would just call up this, their school's admissions office to find out, hey, I, it looks like I do need to submit a midterm report. Um, how do I go about um, emailing that to over to you? Uh, they will allow you to, uh, to include your resume or CV. Um, for permanent resident, you can uh, update your green, uh, input your green card if you want to. Affiliation statement, uh, carefully review response. You must affirm, okay, that everything is true. So basically you're saying that everything that you're submitting is, you know, your own work, okay? And you're honest and so forth. So just read through all this uh, information and just click affirm and then sign it. Regarding the program material, this section is individualized to each university that you're applying to. So let's just use a couple of the examples. NYU. Here is really the uh, either short questions or the personal statement. They'll ask you a number of questions, family, uh, some additional information here. Then here is the prior writing prompt. That's 250 characters. Please provide a statement that addresses your reason for seeking transfer and the objective you hope to achieve. How can NYU and the participating schools, college programs, and or study areas you are applying to support those goals? So again, when you're doing this, just like the UC application, look at the keywords. Provide a statement that addresses your reason for seeking transfer and objectives you achieve, hope to achieve. So. Why are you going to, why do you want to transfer to NYU and what you hope to achieve really at NYU? Both generally and also at NYU. And why specifically NYU for their specific um, university or that college major that you're going into and or a special program. Um, I would highly recommend you to do a lot of these uh, personal statements, okay? Especially if it's a two to three pager on a Word document first or a Google file first. Then once you have it all edited, then copy and paste it into here. Let's look at USC and also CHEP, since those are pretty popular schools. Ah, surprised I didn't add USC in here in the past. Let me just add that really quick. USC, here are their questions. Um, Fee waiver, do you need it to pursue financial need, uh, financial aid, religious preference? Uh, some are required and some are optional, so you don't have to fulfill this in if you don't want to. They have some additional questions here. If there is a question or some parts of the application you're not sure of, please just come see uh, one of our transfer counselors, either for drop-in or for an appointment. Uh, here they uh, ask you for your major. And then USC actually has multiple questions. Uh, this is 650 words, so about a little bit more than two pages. This one is one page. And then lastly, this is uh, one page also. 
And they even ask, you know, words to describe yourself. First word, second word, third word, favorite snack, movie, dream job. So this is all customized in what they're wanting uh, to be part of your application. And just know that, you know, um, I know especially for Chapman and USC, this is how they do it. Um, let's say the deadline is February 1st for USC. I believe that's the deadline. Okay. Uh, if I am, yeah, two, uh, 215, my apologies. Um, you want to, one, get the application in, you know, definitely a few days before that, if you can. Number two, uh, for the letter recommendation, um, I would already at this time, fill this information out and have your recommenders start working on it already. Now, if your recommenders don't submit it right away before the deadline, that's still okay, all right? Um, they'll still give the recommenders, you know, at least another few weeks to a month uh, to fill it out, okay? Um, also, regarding your official transcripts, once you submit your application, I would then submit the transcript right, right away if it's required uh, for you to submit official transcripts. So what USC does is this. Any student who submitted their application, okay, uh, by the deadline, and their review, their letter re recommendation is in like ASAP, you know, early in early February, then um, you submit your official transcripts, okay, right around that time also. The earlier you have everything, then you get an earlier review. If your transcripts aren't there or your recommendation letters aren't there until, let's say, March 15th, then USC will put you on the side and review all the other students first. Then they'll get to yours once they your full application or packet is uh, fully complete. I know that that's what USC and also Chapman does. I don't know about the other schools, but I'm gonna assume that it's gonna be very similar. So definitely you wanna get everything in on time and um, early as possible. Documents, if the school requires unofficial, which I believe NYU does, this is where you could uh, go onto your my site, save your unofficial transcript as a PDF, and then click add documents here. So again, under academic history, college coursework, it literally even tells you if you need the full transcript entry or not. And then double check again, you know, each school's website to see how they want you to submit your uh, transcripts. I'm guessing this. Schools that don't need transcript entry for sure 100%, they're gonna require you to submit official transcripts. For the schools that says um, need full transcript entry where you have to input every single course, every single semester for all the colleges you attended, likely they're probably still gonna ask you for official transcripts. Anything else? Let me go through program materials one last time for maybe some of the other uh, schools. Let's look at Chapman and University of Penn. Recommenders here, professional, academic, and personal. So profession, professional could be your supervisor at work, okay? Or someone who's mentored you, who knows you really well. Academic really is your um, faculty members and, and or counselors. Ideally, it, it, if you're like a bio major, you should have uh, one recommend, recommendation from someone in the sciences, bio or chem and so forth, okay? Curious for you, Penn, what they ask. Waiver, are you a non-traditional transfer applicant, academics? family. And then here are their questions. Explain the reason for transferring from your current institution and what you hope to gain by transferring to another institution. How have you explored um, the community at UPenn? So some of you can overlap a little bit, but for the, sh for the most part, try your best to, um, to answer each question separately, okay? It could build upon another because there's definitely a, a connection between transferring generally and transferring to UPenn.
So you could still say you want to transfer U pen here and what you hope to gain by transferring. Okay. But then here it's asking, asking, asking specifically about exploring U pen and uh, um, how U pen will help shape your perspective, experience, and perspective U pen. So, really, why U pen? Some additional questions here. See anything else I could tell you? Oh, hey, you know what? Here's one more thing too. For the students who are applying to USC, you can just go to our YouTube page, IBC Transfer Center. Click on to playlist. Here is the uh, Common App Overview. Okay, um, Chapman University uh, presented for us. All the day again, my name is Shannon Krogan. Okay, so she is the uh, Director of Admis Transfer Admissions at uh, Chapman University. So she, she, similar to what I did today with you on the Common App, she actually goes through the whole uh, application itself. Let me put that into the chat for you. Okay. And lastly, I think my final advice is, um, as necessary, you know, reach out to some of the uh, representatives at some of the schools directly if you cannot find the information or come to our transfer center and they will help you uh, dig for the information if you're not sure uh, about something, okay? But most of it is fairly straightforward. There's always going to be those little nuances about a specific school. Do they need this or not? Um, you'll, you should be able to find most information on their website. If you can't, then we would have to um, email them, contact them to, uh, to confirm or double check uh, details. Right? And lastly, what if for the students who are applying to multiple campuses, maybe like five or seven, you know, definitely keep organized, okay? Um, do an Excel sheet, organize everything, know your deadlines, and then ask your recommenders to fill out the information uh, early on.